Hey everybody! Welcome to Northern Land Plays Darkest Dungeon. You wanted to see it, and I promised that uh, once Darkest Dungeon was actually out of early access, I would do another series on it. This is this is the thirteen thousandth build. Is that legitimate? Because if that's what software development entails, I think I wanna I wanna opt out immediately. My math might be off, but that seems like one build a day for eternity? Is that correct? Anyway, Darkest Dungeon is a 2D um, RPG strategy hybrid. You're probably familiar with it. It came out three days ago. It's the oldest game in existence. It's old news, and I'm a grandpa for just getting around to playing it now. But we're going to play some here. I did a series when it came out in Early Access um, last January, and it was one of my favorite games from the last year. And now that it's actually out, I'm excited to revisit it. Lots has changed over the past little while. So we're going to call this YouTube playthrough. It's a little bit through YouTube playthrough. Um, playthrough. Uh, one of these days I'll learn how to speak English. Um, you can approximate it a little bit as like a 2D XCOM dungeon crawler sort of thing. It is like a tactics based strategy game to some extent. Uh, and we'll we'll talk about that as we get going. I've only played like an hour of the release build so I'm going to be a little bit out of practice but we're going to we're going to do our damnedest to learn on the fly here, and we start with tutorials, so that should be good. All right, so we start with um, the Crusader and the Highwayman. Map navigation, you're currently in a room. To move forth, click on another room on the map. Display, this will take you to the connecting hallway. Um, the rooms are what we're in right now. We can move back and forth. And the um, hallway is what we pass through when we Greetings click on this room to navigate. Up these lanes. Keep to the side path. The hamlet is just ahead. And then we can walk with WASD. So basically, well, just A and D, I guess. Um, as you walk, you're going to encounter enemies, and you're going to attack these enemies using the skills that we have available to us right here. So it is a turn-based strategy game, as mentioned. Um, let's take a quick moment to talk about the interface. But you're going to figure things out pretty quickly, and I imagine most people have probably seen this game in action and before, so they understand what's happening anyway. This is Dismas, the Highwayman. He has several abilities, but these abilities, uh, as denoted by the dots on the top, like the two columns at the top, tell you uh, where you can stand to do these attacks. So to, to use open vein, Dismas has to be in the 1, 2, or 3 position linearly from 4, 3, 2, 1. And it can hit the units that are in the 1 or the 2 position. We only have 1, so that's easy. Grape Shot Blast, we have to be in the 2 or 3 position, and then it hits 1, 2, and 3. Pistol Shot, we can't use because it doesn't hit the unit at the front. And Tracking Shot, we can't use because it doesn't hit the unit at the front. We're just going to use open vein. This will inflict a bleed, 100% base chance of bleed, of two points for two points per round for three rounds. The enemy's bleed resistance is 20. If my math is correct, that means that we have an 80% chance of inflicting bleed on top of the damage that we actually have on top. So there's four damage, and they resisted the bleed, which is actually kind of surprising. Now, we got our Crusader, Raynal. Um, we can smite, which uh, does good damage. You can see how much the damage will do, 6 to 12 with a 5% chance to crit. We could use Zealous Accusation, which is a ranged attack, 3 to 7 with a 5% chance to crit. We could Stun, which is 5% chance to crit, it only does 2 to 3 damage, but an 88% chance to hit. Or we could use Bulwark of Faith, which basically makes our unit better and marks a future one, I guess. But we'll use Stunning Blow, they only have a 25% stun resist, so hopefully we can stun them and keep them from being able to attack. Beautiful. So this gives us basically a free turn. The thing is that when an enemy comes off of a stun, which they just did right there, they get a resistance to it, so it's less... Uh, you, you can't really chain those attacks as much as you'd like. Sweet, we crit them, and we got 50 gold pieces here. We also have food, which we will not eat. We'll talk about that when we get to the camping lair, which, despite coming across this tent, is not what comes up next. We'll have Dismas pick this up. The brigands have left valuables. Sometimes that'll work out well for you and give you resources. Sometimes that'll work out terribly for you and give you uh, things that you don't like, like a booby trap or something like that. We got super lucky to surprise them again. Now here is where things get interesting. I'm sorry to continually speak over uh, Wayne July's terrific narration in the back here. Um, we could probably do a, a, quite a number on the unit in the back, but we have no abilities with our Crusader that can hit the unit at the back. So I think we're going to prioritize killing the unit at the front as soon as possible. Um, and maybe we can get a little bit of both via, like, the Grape Shot Blast. Although it has 0% chance to crit, huh? What about a Pistol Shot? 4 to 8 with a 15% chance to crit. Really? And then Tracking Shot does 2 to 3 damage, but also gives us a huge buff. Plus 12% damage, plus 6 accuracy, plus 5 crit. Probably your best move first is buff yourself and take a shot. It did not crit, but it does buff them in the future. We could try to stun this guy, but there's a 50% chance that it actually will not stun him So because of his uh, stun resist. So maybe we use Bulwark of Faith on ourself. 
And then this will buff our unit up. It also gives us more torch ability. We have plus 25 protection, which should lower our damage intake. Uh, and we we're also marked, which means we attract more uh, attacks from the enemy, so it's less likely that, like, Mathis, not Mathis, Dismas will be hit here. I say Mathis because I named my highwayman Mathis in the previous playthrough. Alright, let's pistol shot the unit at the back. Nice, that was a pretty lucky crit. One in five chance of landing. Um, now, I think we should just probably go wild on this guy and, and, and try to make sure that we kill him as soon as possible. You know, RNG is definitely a, a factor in Darkest Dungeon, and you can get to the point where... Uh, oh, we got bleed, too. Um, you can uh, get screwed by the RNG, even in the tutorial, so it, it's re really nice that it seems to be going pretty well for us here. Admittedly, going for stuns might actually be a good course of action here. Uh, even if it is a 50% chance that he won't get hit by it, you know, we might as well at least try, right? Is my philosophy, uh, my philosophy at least. Um, what's our pistol shot? Four to eight with a 15% chance to crit, or five to nine with a 5% chance to crit, and it has a chance to inflict bleed. Probably we go for the, the guaranteed damage and the decent chance of bleed. Beautiful. Uh, it's not like we're not going to kill him this turn anyway, but still. Whoa! We didn't! Well, he'll die next turn either way. The problem is that he gets to do another attack, which gives us uh, stress, and that stress actually is persistent level to level, so... Uh, we, we need to do something about that, basically. All right, take that. There we go. We've completed our first mission. That went relatively well. Let's return to the hamlet. This is always booby-trapped, if I remember correctly. All right, so we got 5,000 gold. We got a little bit of uh, extra treasure for the food. I don't know if we used to get that. So I guess if you take too much food, at least you get some of the money rebated back. We got some heirlooms, which we use to upgrade our abilities or our uh, resources in town, and some gold and some jade. Now, did you guys level up? Yeah, they got to level 1, and... You got the Hard Noggin ability, plus 15% stun resist. And Dud Hitter, minus 3% crit if HP is below 50, but plus 10% damage on range skills. Seems like a fair trade. For now, at least. I might be wrong in the future. Keep in mind, I haven't played Darkest Dungeon in a while, so um, my knowledge might Such be a little bit outdated here. This squalid hamlet, these corrupted lands, they are yours now. And you are bound to them. What is the ancestors' Most memoirs? Oh, it's so we can play the story back the again. I see. Earth, awaiting merciful oblivion. I guess these are other things that we unlock, and then that gives us the In time. You will know the yeah, it gives us the uh, narratives failings. that we can replay. Okay, so the next step for us: women and men, soldiers I'll and let him talk. fools and corpses. All will find their way to us now that the road is clear. The next step for us is going to be picking up a Plague Doctor Better and a Vestal. The blood -soaked battlefield. And that is going to allow us to have a, a full party now. Can we rename these units on the fly? Absolutely. All right, so let's uh, let's just name them in, in the way... We'll start with, like, the straight-up roundtable podcast here. So, obviously, you know, you got your fearless leader... Bear Taffy, Bear Taffy, who's an apprentice crusader, and then you got your guy who hides in the shadows and is a douchebag and takes shots at me on Twitter from afar. That'll be Mathis Games here. Um, Nick was our Plague Doctor last time, so I'm gonna call him Plague Doctor. No, I'm gonna call him Rock Lee Smile. And then in our final section, back. Excuse me. Okay, I need to hit the X button first. In our final person back here instead of Cecil. You know what? This is going to be your almighty northern line. Yeah, I'm going to be the healer this time. I want to check out our abilities here as well. So we got the ba we got the bash, we got judgment, which is a self-heal and a ranged attack, is that correct? I can't remember. And we got divine grace, which is a, a directed heal and illumination, which gives us more torches and kind of debuffs the unit and does a little damage. It's not my favorite uh, ability, but that's okay. What about our plague doctor? Um Plague Grenade hits the units at the back, and then is that like Blinding Gas? Is that what that one is? Blinding Gas hits the units at the back. Incision hits the units at the front, which is nice. And Emboldening Vapors hits, uh, well, it's a buff to whoever we hit with it. Um, not the best ability, but again, we can unlock these um, through one of the, through one of the uh, sections that I forgot about. Probably the, the Guild, is that correct? We can't unlock it yet. We need to complete more quests. Okay. Um, Let's start with uh, the stagecoach and see if we can upgrade it a little bit. We only have, uh, as of right now... Oh no, we have a little bit of everything. Okay, I thought we started with nothing. So, 
Sure, increases the number of available heroes or increases the size of roster. Let's go available heroes and a little bit of calling. roster action. Ambition is stirring in distant cities. We can use this. There's nothing else we can really unlock here. We can make the graveyard better, but we're going to embark on our next quest. A mecca of madness and morbidity. Your work begins. Now, the one of the cruxes of strategy in uh, Darkest Dungeon is figuring out how you want to outfit your squad uh, in terms of, like, linearity. Our Crusader definitely prefers to be near the front. Second position is perfect for our Highwaymen. Now, the question is, do you put your... Uh, Plague Doctor in the back, or do you put them in the third position? In the back, they can still throw, but they can't use um, their incision ability. Whereas if we put this unit in the back, it's definitely not going to be able to hit either way, like with the melee attack. But if we put it in the back, it won't be able to use Illumination. I think that's fair, and we'll just use this predominantly as a, as a healer that can also attack. So sure, let's go buy some provisions. We still have a decent number of gold here. Preparedness. Um, for your first quest, try bringing at least eight food later. and four torches. So let's start with um, eight food. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and four torches. One, two, three, four. Obviously, the more that you bring, the safer you're going to be, but the more money you're going to spend, and probably not all of it gets uh, brought back. I'm also going to take, we got some holy water, but I'm also going to take uh, a skeleton key, and the anti-venom could be useful as well. All right, let's give it a try. I'm still getting my sea legs underneath me here, so I expect that, you know, it, it, it'll probably be easy to start with, and then it'll get difficult quickly. I've heard that the Darkest Dungeon is a game that has gotten much harder as time has gone on uh, in, in its early access game. So our objective, or in its early access phase. Uh, our objective right now, explore 90% of rooms. So we'll probably, I mean, we have to do every room but one. I understand that we're there. We'll probably go around like that, and then skip this room right here. Usually, I think you want to go to the last room. Is it more likely to have treasure in it? I can't remember. Keep walking. Oh, we start with a torch. You salvage the unburned torch. I will take it. Beautiful. Now, as the light goes down, you get more uh, stress, and also you're more likely to be surprised and less likely to surprise enemies. So I'm going to try to keep our light high to start with here, but you also get disproportionately lower rewards uh, if the light is high. So you want to... Um, or, like, you get, like, lower experience or something like that. Okay, let's start with Incision, although, admittedly, these units have 200% debuff to bleed. So, really, we'd just be looking for the damage here, and the damage is 4 to 7. They have 8 HP. It seems advisable to me, rather than just taking um, Emboldening Vapors here. Although, actually, let's try Emboldening Vapors on, um, on our Crusader, and then we'll maybe try to use uh, their ability that can hit multiple units at the front. Uh, now, these units should be weak against uh, our holy attacks. We'll see, I guess. Judgment. Damage is 4 to 8 with a 7.5% chance to crit. Let's try to hit the unit at the back. They're less likely to be hit, I guess, because they're further away. Also does a little self-heal. Um, we'll have Mathis do a Grape Shot Blast to hit both of the units. Therefore, that killed one. Broken. Um, Maintain. When monsters die, they leave corpses. Corpses have to act as temporary obstacles and will eventually go away on their own. You can attack corpses to destroy them faster, but often a better approach is to use ranged skills, push pulls, push pull skills, and even corpse clearing special skills that some heroes possess. Okay, that's good to know. Press this advantage. So we want to kill the unit at the back first, so that it leaves a corpse at the back as well. Unlocked strong box. Let's open it. The contents are yours. We got a shovel, which is good. That clears some space in front of us. Um, and some heirlooms that we can use in the future as well. So we'll be moving up here now. Why do we still have a buff? What's the buff for? Oh, it continues uh, for a while Even after the our uh, stone seems bent on preventing passage. After uh, after the actual combat, I didn't know that. Okay, so we got caught out a little bit with there being no light. Let's think about this one. I haven't seen these enemies in a while. Cultist acolyte. They're annoying, I recall. But it should be pretty easy for us to kill the Cultist Acolyte, who I believe is an enemy that amps up our stress, which can be more dangerous than actually HP. Um, let's do just a quick Grape Shot Blast and hit all three. Wounded him pretty nicely. Uh, let's do... What are your odds of being poisoned? Let's take a look at this objectively. It, uh, the, wait, Blinding Gas does no damage. It just has a chance to stun. Okay. Let's give it a try. 
That worked beautifully. I appreciate that. Um, we'll do a ranged attack on it to try to knock it out before it can do anything. They've been stunned and then uh, buffed. The buff is just to give them extra stun resist. That was a decent amount of damage. Uh, is there any way we can hit that unit back there? Unfortunately not. So let's use a zealous accusation. Hit both of the units at the front. And then the corpse. I was going to say that unit will move up. But no, it's the corpse. I remember now. Okay. Um, let's see if we can land a poison grenade on the unit at the back. They've been blighted and now will die. Wow, that blight damage is incredibly good. Open vein doesn't inflict bleed, but does get the kill. Beautiful. And then we just got this corpse hanging out here. How's it going? Corpsey. Pretty Success good. So clearly in view. Beautiful. Or Still moving on here. Stress is uh, not amazing, mind. but not necessarily horrible. Uh, our next location will be up here. And I believe the higher our light is, the more percentage chance we have to scout in between missions as well. Or in between levels. So when we go to a level, it'll do like a tick, 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 and then we'll see what's in the next room before we even get there. The pack contains loot. You absolutely take it. I feel like the game's going a little easy on me right now, and I appreciate that a great deal. Alright. St surprised? Not surprised. This is the thing, it's like, I'm still not... I, I feel like we've got our vessel and Rockley Smile here, our Plague Doctor, unoptimized. I really feel like we should tailor make their skills in such a way that one of them is dedicated kind of at the back. But anyway, let's let's just try to stun the Acolyte for now. Stress is probably more damaging to us than HP. That's very unfortunate that that didn't work out. We'll Grape Shot Blast all three. And that's uh, honestly four damage each is pretty good. We will judge the unit at the back. Oh wait, is there... These units are unholy, so it'll do... More damage? No, these ones are not better against unholy units. Okay. 3 to 7, it is 6 HP, 4 to 8, 4 to 8. I went for the unit at the back just to just to have a better chance to take them out early, I guess. Ren for the old gods, 4 damage and bleed and debuff. Wow, my plus 10% stress damage for 3 rounds. Then 1 damage and uh, 17 stress done to math is actually quite a lot. It was a graveyard slash. They did the slash. They did the monster slash. Um... 6 to 12 damage, 85% chance of 6 to 12 damage. We'll just knock out a unit. My flow chart is basically take out the worst unit, but if we can't take out the worst unit, then, like worst in terms of most annoying, then take out the one that's uh, closest to death, if possible. Okay, that Blight should get the kill next turn, which means I think we should go for the Incision. Wow, it was an incredibly lucky crit. And because they were inflicted with bleed, they don't leave a corpse, and then Blight killed the other one. That went really well. All right, take all. Um, you know what? I, I think we should use the bandage on our Crusader. And an heirloom chest. A chest with your family's sigil. Just to be safe, maybe... Uh, we could probably open it. It's trapped! <laughs> ah, we just, we just made him not bleed, and now he's bleeding again. All right, move to this room. So we're going to take some damage here. That's okay. Life goes on. Let's, let's crack a torch as well. Yeah, I, I bleed. It's a great... Uh, it's a pixie song. As loud as hell. Uh, ringing bell. Anyway, let's not crack our last torch yet. No enemies. Um, we do get some scouting here, which is nice. There is treasure in that room, but we'd have to backtrack twice, so I really don't want to do that. There's another backpack. Let's have a healthy person look at the backpack, just in case it's trapped. We got loot. Um, honestly... You know, why does it, we have Nick eat, like, two food? Mathis, you can eat two food. Um, Bear Taffy, you want to eat, like, two food? Now we're looking pretty good. Let's crack our last torch. We might find another torch in the future. It's possible, at least. Um, we're very lucky that we, we still have enough food left over to eat. Which not only gives us HP regen, but causes us to not suffer stress damage, thanks to that random check there. No enemies again. All right, this will be our last room then, and probably the last one we do over the course of this first video. Come on. I like the way you work it. No enemies. The light is fading. The current torch level greatly affects many mechanics in the game. The darker it gets, the harder things get, but the better the rewards. There's lots of stress. Monsters are a little buffed, but we get better crit chance and better loot. Slightly better loot, at least. We have no shovel. We have one shovel. We have two shovels. Oh, my God. We're way safer than I thought we would be. All right. 
We're more likely to be surprised by these enemies now than they are to be su surprised by us, is my guess. We start. I would like to start by trying to stun both units at the back. 10%, 10%, pretty good, I pretty good chance here, Nick. Oh, the unit at the back resisted. He's like the most annoying, too. Okay. Um, I think we should really try to get the units at the back taken care of. So I may actually do um, a, just a pistol shot on... Let's hit the third unit. Oh, that's so bad. I, I wanted to hit the third unit because they're going to give us stress damage. But the unit at the back, the crossbowman, is going to be super annoying as well. Um, let's go for... No, that, I, I, sorry, I refuse to believe that. Uh, I refuse to believe that we have been... Uh, We've missed twice in a row. All right. Um, two units at the front. That one only has 10 HP, the second one. So we're going to go for that and hope for a lucky kill. Close. Close enough that a Grape Shot Blast can finish the job for us. You know, there's a little bit of luck on our side. We dodged the shot. All right. Nick comes in again. Very unlikely to hit the unit at the back. So I think we're probably best off go or to stun the unit at the back. I think we're best off going for a quick incision. Which, uh, I resisted the bleed, so unfortunately it did still create a corpse, but, uh, that's fine. We do get hit with Tempting Goblet, which is gonna be, like, incredible stress damage. Now, knock this dude out of the picture. Six damage is pretty good. A pistol shot from Mathis could finish the job, but Grape Shot Blast could as well. Do it! Do it! Hey, excellent. Might have killed the corpse, too. Nah, just did some damage. We do get hit by the Axe Blade. Adds uh, rough, but it could be worse. Okay. Now, we basically have no, uh... I mean, we could try to stun them. And actually, now that I think about it, that's pretty good. If we stun them, 75% chance of doing so. Then we just have the, uh... Arbalist at the back, who is admittedly really annoying. But we can take an extra turn... To take out this, uh... Crossbowman back here, who's pissing me off. We might want to heal, uh... Our Highwayman, but I'm gonna go straight for the damage right away. For better or for worse. We could try to stun again. The odds are pretty low, though, so let's just go for the actual damage. And now that worked out terribly, as you can see. What do you think? I think blinding gas, man. I think we go for the 90% stun chance, assuming we hit. Stun the shit out of that corpse, too. Okay. Good, good. There's the stuns coming off, but we should get one extra turn. I think you probably try to incision the guy at the front. There's no way we're going to bleed him. But you might as well do some damage. You, I think, now have to heal our Highwaymen. Because there's huge consequences to losing all of your HP. It may not kill you, but you're not going to be loving life. I'll tell you that much. Good time for a crit. At least lowered your stress a little bit. Um, your stun, ch stun resist is 65. So I think we just go for raw damage now. We're one hit away from finishing the job. Mathis will not die. He will be a little stressed out, but he's not going to die. And then we'll have uh, Nick finish the job here. Easy peasy. We also finished uh, our quest, but we're going to continue adventuring just for a second here. Heirloom chest. A chest with your family's sigil. We don't need the keys. What if we put some holy water in there? That item had no effect. All right. What if we put a key there? The key unlocks a hidden compartment. We got 12 extra uh, crests there. That's really good, actually. That mission went okay. A little bit more stress than I would have liked, but that's okay. We also got a debuff stone, plus 20% debuff skill chance, but minus one speed. What is a debuff skill? I guess like something that causes enemies to have a better chance to miss or something like that. I don't know if we have any unit we really want to put that on right now, but we'll see. Bear Taffy gets Warren's Explorer, plus 20% st scouting chance in the Warrens. Pretty good. Mathis Games gets Kleptomaniac prone to stealing, but plus 10% scouting chance in the Wailed. Wield? Possibly wield. Let's see what we can do back in the hamlet here, and then we'll uh, long probably end this episode. The sunken faces of passersby, a glimmer of hope. All right, so now we have uh, the abbey for stress relief. The cobwebs have been dusted. The pews set straight. The abbey calls to the faithful. Heroes relieve stress by taking part in activities at the tavern and the abbey. Each side effect has different, or each activity has different side effects. Experiment to find the best activity for each hero depending on their quirks. Committing a hero to an activity locks them in that activity until the next week. You'll have to take a different hero with you on your next quest. Okay, good to know. And then in the tavern. Fresh kegs, cards, and curtained rooms 
promise solace to the weary and broken alike. Well, we're probably going to have Nick and Mathis get a little bit more stress relief, so let's see who we got in here. We need someone to replace Nick. Uh, we could, for now, we could bring in the occultist. To fight the abyss. Well, we should take in all of them, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. We have a second vessel which doesn't do much for us right now, but will when one of them has too much stress. Um, but we could run we could run a Jester in the Highwayman's position and an Occultist in the Plague Doctor's position, probably. Um, before we get stress relief, we might as well upgrade our Tavern if we can. So, increase stress recovery. All manner of diversion and dalliance await those who cross the threshold with coin and hand. Uh, let's, let's just get, like, one of each for those ones, and then we'll go back to our abbey and try to do the same thing. I don't, I don't really know the min-maxi type stuff for this. Um, do we have the experience or the, uh... A man in yeah, we have the resources necessary. Sweet, okay. With the let's look at the, uh, priorities. He's not allowed to gamble. Prone to stealing items. We just need a little bit of stress released. There you go, a thousand gold to get Mathis' stress released at the Cloister. And then, uh, Nick, what are your traits? Anemic and Ligophobia. So you actually don't have any, uh, anything that precludes you from going to the bar to drink your cares away, for example. Then we got a confirm treatment. Maybe I forgot to push the button. Yeah. All right, uh, that's going to be our first episode of Darkest Dungeon. If you enjoy it, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and uh, of course, I'll be back soon with another episode. See you then.